Hey folks, now that I've had a little time to exercise the live steam locomotive, I'll get back working on the corn. Here's the tool holder, and it's, as you can see, it's sitting in place on the rotating base, and it's basically, it's almost done. I need to finish, there's three more pieces. There's the, whoa, the very visible hand wheel part. There's a collet that goes inside that, and then a nut that, that threads on the back of it. So I'm, I decided after looking at the plans that I wanted to make the nut first because then I can make the collet, to, the, the, the threads to mate it. So I'll be working on that now and I will. Uh, the next several installments you see will be working on that. Okay, since people like it, I'll throw in some actual machining segments. And just to show you, I, I'm using the calipers here this is going down to 1.750 inches, so I have just under a hundred thousandths, about ninety thousandths left to go. And I'll, uh, I'm using about 220 RPM here, carbide bit. I'm feeding by hand, I'm taking off about thirty thousandths, so it's a fifteen thousand depth, depth of cut. I might could take more, but you know, it's comfortable with. So. Even with my right hand, and that's why it's a little erratic because I've got holding the iPhone in my left hand. And this takes successive coats like this. I'm going down to a, a half an inch wide. This is way bigger than the nut needs to be. So that's a half inch. Rock it back. Turn it off. Don't grab the the um, shrapnel. <laughs> Don't grab the, the metal with your hands. I always keep a brush handy. Look at that. That would be a good thing to show. I keep this giant old dirty paintbrush here. When I've got something, you know, that that I need to brush out of the way, I use the big paintbrush. I never use my hands because I don't want to cut my hands. So anyway, I just kind of keep doing successive sections like this. I'll check there we go. So that, that worked out good. Um, still have about 55 thou left to go to get me to where I need to be. Or I'll just repeat this till we get it down to the correct outside. Okay, I've got it down to the inch and three quarter overall size. And now I'm using my little diamond cutter to put little bevels on the edge of the, what's going to be the nut. As you can see, the first mark here, that's only a quarter of an inch in, so that's as, that's as thick as the nut's going to be. So I've got the bevels put in now, then I can, once I get done with everything, I'll put the cut off. So the next step is going to be to drill it and bore it out to an inch and an eighth, and then I can thread the inside of it. Here we are drilling. I've got a set of large drill bits that go all the way up to an inch. Actually, I have two sets. One is kind of a uh, silver and zinc type set that I use for soft metals. Then I have this other set here that they're like tin coated you know, titanium nitride. You can see the hole in there. This is the set. I got it off of eBay. So I use Years ago. It works pretty good. I've had, I'd say, intermittent results with it. Not everything's perfect, but I will say this material is stainless because I tried to pick up some of the swarf with a magnet and it wouldn't pick up. So this is definitely stainless steel here. It's a pretty hard grade of stainless as you can see by the way it's machining, but it's coming out pretty clean in there. And what I'll do is I'll go all the way up to an inch. I've got the lathe set on 70 RPM, so I'll just keep making progressively larger cuts till I've bored, uh, drilled it out to one inch and then use the boring bar to get it out to an inch and a quarter. Okay, folks, last step before I call it a night. With the uh, stainless steel, I've turned the outside diameter to an inch and three quarters. I've drilled and bored it out to an inch and an eighth inside, so it's, it'll be ready for threading when I come back to it. And I'm uh, putting the knurling on the outside here, as you can see. I just use, um, it's about the maximum capacity of my little homemade knurling tool. And I put plenty of oil on it, and I'll just run it. I'm running at 70 RPM, 
Well, let's see how it goes here. Run it for a while. You know, just, I'll run it for a short period of time like this. I don't really need to move it left or right because the, it's only an eighth of an inch wide, or excuse me, a quarter inch wide. And then I'll, I can tighten up the wing nut with some vice grips in between runs here. So I'll just feel on it and see if it's satisfactory. It's getting pretty close. I'll probably tighten it up one more time and run it again, and that'll be it for this evening. So I'll keep you posted. Hey, as I prepare for threading this, I wanted to point out one important consideration. When you're dealing with an unusual size, like this is um, the, the threading portion that this is going to mate to is an inch and three sixteenths with 20 TPI. And I was trying to figure out what size this hole needed to be. And I watched some YouTube videos and I was reminded that I should refer to the Machinery's Handbook. And I wanted to show you that real quick. I just finished taking a spring pass to open this up to 1.33 inches internal diameter here to get ready for threading the 20 TPI. And I'll show you that in a separate segment. But if you're not familiar with Machinery's Handbook and the tools and stuff, so I use the telescoping gauge and my calipers to measure it, but this is my machinery's handbook. It's an old one, but it really doesn't matter. If you can get a hold of one of these, just get one. That's my guidance to you. I bought this, I think, at a library book sale. You can see it was a whopping $9.95. It's an older edition. I don't even know what year, but basically... This thing is so thick and jam-packed full of information. It's, it's one way of thinking about it. You know, the Industrial Revolution started in, what, 1670 or something like that? Basically, all of the information of the Industrial Revolution is contained in these several thousand pages, like 3,000, 2,500 pages. But there's tables in here about threads and what size. So this is the internal threads you know, internal threads, and it gives you the min and max diameters, the different fit tolerances and so forth. So there's the 1.133, and that's what I've just opened mine up to. And um, what it's hard to read those small numbers, so what I do is that once I find the information for the internal and the external, I write it down, and I also figure I subtracted, you know, the maximum size, and I get basically... Uh, it's a 55 thou depth, so divide that by 2, about 27 and a half thousandths is going to be the, the actual depth of cut that I'm going to cut into, into it, or 55 if I'm going by the, um, the DRO. So just an important thing to, to think about um, and check out when you are planning to do some unusual machining work. Okay, preparing for the threading. I've taken pains to set up my threading tool. As you can see, I've, I've bought a, a fancy carbide internal threading tool. I've actually never used this before, so I'm going to give it a try. And I probably won't be videotaping this during the process because I only have a half inch deep hole there. And let me put the light on it. You can see a little bit better. So I'm going to be pretty busy disengaging the half nut as it gets close to the end there. And as as you can see from the, the uh, in information, the written information, I'm going to go 55 thou overall depth of cut. And I'll start out with a 3 thou um, pass just to, to check my, my thread pitch. Okay, I made the initial pass, and I'm glad I didn't try to videotape that because it happened really fast, even though I'm only threading it. Um, 70 RPM, but we'll check the thread. Yeah, it looks like 20 TPI, pretty good. It's hard to show that on the camera, but it looks fine to me. And we will continue on, and I'll bring you back as we finish up. Okay, the interior threads are complete. They look okay, they feel okay, but I got nothing to test them with. Kind of wish maybe I had done this backwards and done the other part first, so I could try screwing it in there. Anyway. As you can see, there's still some blue left on the inside. What I did was I cut the half nut with about 75 thou to go, so it didn't go all the way and, and crash into the back of the hole. So now it's time to cut it off. Hey everybody, I'm about halfway through making the collet now. As you can see, I've turned down the outer diameter of my stock. I've turned down the smaller part. I've put the threads in there, the 20 TPI threads, and I'm about to cut the 40 degree included angle, which is 
on your if your lathe is like this one it's you, you want to set it at like 20 degrees so if you look I'm not going to show the whole process of making this because Maddie already did a great job if you look at his uh, tool holder part 3 video he talks about this and I'm copying his idea about cutting this angle see I can leave the the uh, compound set just the way it is for right now I can leave it set that way for when I cut the inside um, angle of the actual hand wheel so I'm, I'm cutting in reverse and um, I'll show you put got the lathe running in reverse and just making small incremental cuts here Back up here, back up a little bit. Easy peasy once you have the setup. So thank you again, Maddie. Appreciate it. Hey folks, I wanted to show something. When I test fit the, the completed collet on the nut, I realized I actually hadn't cut the nut threads deep enough. So what I'm doing is making a correction here. All right, let me show you what I'm doing. All right, I got it in forward. I'm going to take, remove the power. See, I've left the half nut engaged. The way you do it, you can you pick up the the thread with your cutting tool, and then wherever it picks up, then lock your half nut and leave it locked. And then I can just use the lathe, the uh, controls. So right now I'll, I'll push it the the cutting tool forward a little bit, then I can put it in reverse and just back it out without breaking the carbide and without messing up the, uh, the threads or anything, although it's still engaged, so if I need to take another cut, I can just back it out a little bit more and take the front, take that cut. So I can let it back off here enough space so I can put the collet in there to see if it, the threads in. I tried it just a second ago and it was almost completely through. I just needed to take a little um, spring pass, as they say. And this is a pretty small cutter. Got it off of Amazon. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Threads in nicely all the way through. Right to the end there. Yep. Here we go. All right. Very happy about that. So... In the spirit of Maddie showing how he corrected his situation for the uh, 20 degree taper, or the 40 degree included angle, I thought I would show that little correction technique as well. Okay, I'm pretty happy that the, the nut and the collet are finished here, except for I do need to um, use the milling machine and slice the compression slot or slots, if I do like Maddie, into the collet itself. So before I do that and take a chance of buggering it all up, I thought I'd do a little video here and kind of wrap it up. I'll just publish this video here because it's probably long enough. I'm uh, um, showing the collet and the nut and a little extra feature there about how to rescue a thread, an internal thread that um, you goofed up. So anyway, I'm real happy how these two pieces came out. Like I said, this is regular steel of some kind, mystery steel, given to me from a buddy. And the nut is stainless, so that was a little bit of a bear to machine. So the corn project is, is moving along now. And like I said, I'll probably just publish this video like that. I do have the piece selected here for... <laughs> this is going to be the hand wheel, because if you look at Maddie's videos on the his corn number three... Um, it, the, the finished hand wheel is only 9 sixteenths of an inch thick, I believe, so, um, anyway, yeah, 9 sixteenths, 5 65. So, this thing is about 3 quarters of an inch thick, basically. I'll be, um, trimming the edges off of it on the bandsaw, and then probably mounting it on a, an arbor, and turning it round to the, the right diameter. I need to think through all the steps. So this will be time consuming, but I'll do the hand wheel portion in a different in a different segment altogether. Um, so call it a nut or done. Corn project is continuing along. And thanks everybody for watching. Welcome again to the new subscribers. And I will keep you posted.